Hello and welcome back to the Scoutcast. This is the first Scoutcast back in its regular slot just before a game week deadline. And what a deadline it is. Around 100 days have passed and we have a double game week to look forward to or dread. My name is Joe. My name is Andy. My name is Az. Welcome everyone. Andy, what's coming up in the show? (laughs) A few more uh, celebrations from Az by the sounds of it. Oh Um, yes. So like you said, double game week time. So we're going to be looking at chip strategy. Um, I don't think we've all got the same chips left. So we're going to take a look at what we've got, maybe talk about some other strategies as well. Double game week players, of course, are going to be top of the bill. It's what everybody is talking about, along with a few so uh, single game week discussions as well, um, as well as players to keep maybe for the longer term or to start looking at for the longer term as well. So we'll be revealing our squads and then... Uh, and see if we change our mind as the show goes on. Maybe we'll be able to convince each other we got awful teams and they need changing. You now the mind game is beginning yeah. already. The mind game's in. Yes, yeah, so that's that's the important thing, really. I think all of us have a sort of idea what we're going to be doing, um, but I think the important thing is to look at strategy because hopefully this bit won't change. Now the players and the teams that we're going to target may change. But let's have a look at strategy. I just want to briefly ask both of you about strategy. So I'll just go quickly first because mine's really quick. Have a look at the Rate My Team video that uh, myself and uh, David and Neil did, uh, the videos that we've been doing over the last few days. Uh, That explains basically what I'm doing. But my strategy, very, very briefly, is that um, I have a good squad because I wildcarded back in February and I've been tinkering. But I don't have a wild card left, so that's the bad news bit. So I'm using my free hit. It just makes sense to me. I want to keep my team long term. I don't actually want it for game week 30, but want it beyond game week 30. Free hit. That's what I'm doing. So that's um, that's my strategy there. Um, As what are you doing? Well, unlike you two foolish people, I've got my wild card mm. in my back pocket, as one of us likes to say. Uh, so I think I'm doing what objectively is the best strategy which is using this lovely unlimited transfers to build a fantastic team for mm. a coming game week and then getting rid of a lot of them next week after bench boosting so i mean yeah. the way i'm looking at it, it's two chips in one you're free hitting and you're bench boosting yeah. in one week amazing yeah it is it is it's, it, the way it's fallen is just absolutely perfect for those that have have still got their second wild card. Now, I just wanted to ask you about the second wild card that you've got. Um, are you planning it to use it straight away in game week 31? And the reason I ask that is because FPL Yogi, who has uh, been uh, amongst the people, uh, the community who've been asking questions, was saying, if you have a second wild card, is there merit in actually keeping it a few game weeks to make it more effective with more information? So, sort of using it when maybe fixtures change a bit, game week 34 ish, or are you you're pretty set on game week 31 using it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's not many weeks left. So I'm trying to kind of get as much out of each week as I possibly can. Uh, there's 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 players that I'm getting in for this week that I kind of want to, want to run away from a bit. So I don't really want to have a triple Sheffield United team going into that United away match. Uh, I don't really want triple City because I think there's going to be loads of rotation there. I'm taking a bit of a punt on a Jesus for the, for the, for the double. Um, I've got no Liverpool players in my, in my team. So I'm going to want well, actually, no, sorry, I've got Trent, but I'm going to want one of Manuel Salah yeah. you know, until the end of the season. So, you know, I think, you know, there is there is merit in waiting sort of as long as you can. But the longer you wait, the less game weeks you've got and mm. the more you're kind of okay. stuck with these players. I, th- I think I think it is it's such a perfect mm-hmm. scenario to, to build your team for this this double game week and then get the team you want for the rest of the season. OK, good to know, because I know some people have got the second wild card are leaving it a bit. But um, good to know you're in that camp, game week 31, use it. There. Now, Andy, what's your what's your basic strategy? I, I think you're similarish to me, aren't you? Yeah, so I've used my second wild card, like I said, foolishly, getting way more points than him since I used it, which is, uh, <laughs> which is a bad decision. But I just oh, just let points. me have this. It's all I've no, got no, this I just, season. <laughs> while you were chatting away, talking rubbish, I was just checking out the scores <laughs> since I used my wild card, and I've done all right actually. So I'm pretty happy with that. Although I'm still behind you, so that's annoying. Um, so yeah, I'm that's just like, yeah, I've only, Andy. I know, I know. I've only got three hit left. So I basically, because I think it's pretty simple for me, because I used, um, because I did transfers during during lockdown uh, and set my team up, like it's as good as it can be not knowing what's going to happen in the next few weeks. Looking at the fixtures and players, I'm pretty happy with it. So I have to free hit this week, get in all the double game week players I do not want in my team long term. And, and that's it, simple as that, really. 
This is it. I mean, the, so the, the basic upshot of it is, is that myself and Andy, we're the underdogs. As you are the front runner here, you're the premium pick. Me and Andy are the underdogs. We're, I don't know, Wimbledon against Liverpool in the fight in the FA Cup. We're Henry Cooper against Muhammad Ali. Um, What's, I um, need it. I've we, had such a rough season. Right, I'm, I'm on it. I'm going to do the final one now. With, with a Rebel sorry, Alliance, sorry. with a Rebel Alliance <laughs> against not only the Empire and Darth Vader, but the First Order and the Old Republic and Darth Revan as well. So that's how much of an underdogs we are. And are you comparing me to Darth Vader? Because I will take that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, happy yeah. with that. <laughs> but that's it. So it's, it's quite... So basically, it's it's a no-lose situation for us. We're not expected to do as well because we've already got our extra points from our wild card. We used it. Um, but my heart does go out to those who used it in game week 29. They used it, going for a double game week, and then suddenly, well, the world changed. Um so, yeah, I do feel sorry for that. So just get that strategy out of the way. And The issue is, though, that it could be one of those double game weeks, which just is a complete yeah. failure, where half your players don't turn up mm. or they play, you know... I mean, looking at someone like Aguero and Jesus, I mean, the reason I'm going for, for Jesus is because I think Ooh. that Aguero and Jesus are both going to start okay. one game and get some minutes of the other. Okay, so... Well, game changer. Well, that's a good, a, good, got... a good segue into the next bit. Good segue, good. Yeah, hold, go. hold Hold your horses, because I'm sure Andy's about to ask us. So... We're going to look at double game week players because we've got it really double game week. So yeah, Andy, take it away. This is your bit. Yeah, so uh, double game week players top of the bill, like we said. We're going to go through each team, uh, each of the four teams that have got mm. a double game uh, double mm. game week, of course, um, and look at the players. So the first one is Man City. Nice segue from us. Mm. So a couple of questions there, but obviously in general we're just going to look at all the players. So prior to FPL, uh, which Man City players should we consider, if any? I mean, if any. Wow. We go, imagine going for no no Man City players. That would be interesting. I'd like to see that team. Um, our differentials like Bernardo Silva an option. Uh, and then FPL Fiddler says, which Man City defender will get the maximum amount of minutes? And is getting a defender or goalkeeper from City a good move? So let's start with you, Az. Dropping the Jesus bombshell. Mm. Who are you going for? Yeah. Man City? Well, I'm, I'm undecided. I, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to have uh, Jesus and De Bruyne. Uh, I think, you know, De Bruyne is, I, we don't need to waste time talking about how great he is. You know, he, he got he probably got 17 points against Arsenal away early in the season, you know, at home to Arsenal and Burnley. I mean, firstly, City's two fixtures couldn't be better, really. I know Arsenal have been a bit more, you know, defensively sound, you know, up until uh, lockdown started. But, I mean, two home games against Arsenal and Burnley, I think it's, it's just incredible. Then You need to max out on them. Uh, I think the five subs things and the and the turnaround means none of their players are going to play 180 minutes. I would I I honestly don't think so. I think he's going to rotate pretty heavily after that Arsenal game. Um, and yeah, it's going to be it's really difficult to think who's going to do it. But what you've got to do is pick the players who you think are going to have got the most kind of explosive options to to get. So I see a lot of people going for Sterling, uh, which I think is 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 really nice to to pair with uh, two attackers. I mean, really, I really want to get three attackers. Is what I really want to do. Currently, I've got Laporte in, uh, but I just worry that he's going to miss one of those two games, and then I've got a single game week defender when I could have had a double attacker getting minutes. Uh, so I would really like Sterling, and then you've got Sane and Mares as well, both looking. You know, I think they're going to start one of those games. I think they're all going to start, and it doesn't matter which game they start. I think they're all going to score pretty well. So I think any of them. <laughs> of, of what Uber I've just mentioned is, is a good pick. I wouldn't argue against any of them. Yeah, what about you, Joe? Well, the same, I, I, which three are you targeting, if, if three at all? Right, well, I'm, I'm a bit different. And the reason I picked my three is not only because I think they're going to be the highest scorers, but I have to go with the advantage I have with a free hit. And I say advantage as in it's a disadvantage compared to bench boosters. So I've got to find that strategy to try and get better. And that, for me, is going for the three best. Aguero, KDB and Sterling. I don't need to worry about budget because I'm not paying a bench boost. I can easily get... In fact, my initial draft of this, I had 1.7 left over and I looked at it thinking, how can I go into this with 1.7 left over? But that's with those three in. With a bench boost, it's trickier because you've got to firm up that bench a bit more. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be having a uh, channel to David for a captaincy video uh, tomorrow and do have a look at that and do listen out for the podcast. Because that is, I've had a little look at um, 
the those those three players and how they've done against Burnley and Arsenal over the last six. And um, well, it's very good news in particular if you're backing one of them. So watch out for that. Um, but yeah, as I said, their home games, I don't know whether home and away is even going to be a thing <laughs> for the rest of this season. But nevertheless, Aguero at home, double game week. You have to captain him, surely. And if I had a triple captain, I would triple captain him. Yes, he may share minutes with Jesus. And yes, he probably will. It's Aguero. Captain. Double game week. <laughs> just, I'm just playing it simple. That's it. And I have Katie being Sterling because I think they will be under consideration. Um, Sterling is actually rarely dropped. And I think he's a great differential against those that are bench boosting. This is ultra strategy for free hitters because... I don't think a lot of bench boosters are going to afford him. So I, therefore, if you're going to captain him and he does well, those bench boosters aren't even going to have him. So that's a, that's a good thing for the free hitters, I think. I also think that Mares is a very good pick if budget is a bit tighter. So for the bench boosters, Mares and indeed Jesus could be good, really. But I'm not complicating it. Who are the three best players? Who am I going to get? Three best players. There we go. What I've been really impressed with 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 Jesus is like all the all the noises that are coming out of his. I know it's only Instagram. And I know it's only his messages and stuff. But like he's had a he's had a personal trainer. He's changed his diet. He's looking in great shape. He's done all these things that to make himself as fit and available as possible. Going into a period in which there's so many games, so thick and fast, mm. and I th I think Pep's going to respect that. And I think they're going to. I think they're going to I wouldn't be surprised for sixty minutes and thirty minutes from both of them mm. over the double. Mm. And like you say, if it was a straight up choice between Jesus and Aguero, obviously there's no pick. But when you've yeah. got the extra money from Jesus to mm. Aguero, and I can spread that money, and I can upgrade Bolly to Doherty. Yeah. It's you know it's and, for, and when I think they're going to they're going to get about the same minutes anyway, I think it might be worth thinking about. For, for bench boosters like you, I think. You 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 can you can be a bit more creative. You can go for the more differentials because budget. But for free hitters like me, and I, I don't know what Andy's going to say. Maybe he might say the same three. Well, but... I think I think the bench boost is hurting people. I think they're yeah. making this <laughs> like if you if you weren't bench boosting, there's no way you'd pick Jesus. No way. I don't think you'd pick Jesus. I think you're they've they've literally played the not literally sorry, but they've almost played the same amount of minutes this year. But I, I just think when Aguero's fit, he's still the main man. Like. I know what you mean. Like there is very little chance of many of the players starting twice, but the time in between games is not that short. Like between the first Man City game and the second, it's five days, and then it's three days till Chelsea. But if they don't play the middle game, that's like what eight days off mm. before they have to play again after a three-month break. Obviously, they've got to build up to match fitness. The five sub thing actually makes me more mm. like City more than before, yeah. actually, because there's more chance from getting on. But I, I don't know about Aguero and Jesus. Like last four matches, Aguero started all four. Jesus started one out of four. I, I I know there's been a long break, and I get that he's been on Instagram a lot, but he's not Sergio Aguero. Like I just yeah, but he doesn't need I, him. He doesn't need. He doesn't need. They've lost the. They've, they'll have lost the league this week anyway. Like why do, yeah, he doesn't need, yeah, he doesn't need to flog Aguero every week? He, and Jesus is the future, as they keep saying over and over again. It's a good time to get him some more minutes. Mm. Yeah, but there was all that talk about him going for Werner. So it, I don't know if Jesus is 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 going to be the future. Like they, he just hasn't had that many minutes as like throughout the whole time he's been there. Like he just what, when's it, why is now the time he's going to break through versus the last few years? Like I, I just think you are right. There's going to be Aguero's limited retiring. minutes. Or going back off to not, Argentina, right? But not right now. No, I hope I not. Anyway, I hope he's going to play in a year. double game. I think he's got another yeah, okay, year. But, look, yeah. I, I guess my point is, I, and maybe I'm framing it because I want Aguero, but I think De Bruyne and Laporte, if he's fully fit, whether mm. or not he is, I don't know, because he hasn't played for a long time consistently. So he would be a worry. A kind of about as nailed on as you can get behind kind of Edison, who's completely nailed on. And then I feel like players like Aguero and Sterling are kind of the next couple who you'd put maybe a little bit of money on starting twice. And then mm. after that, it's like anyone's guess who's going to, who's going to play twice. So I just think Aguero is just so explosive. Like he's, he scored one less goal than Salah this season. Mm. And he's played like seven, 800 minutes less. Yeah. Like he's crazy. Still. Like to... he's, when he's on the pitch, he's still amazing. We've got, we've got some stats on the screen here. And uh, for the benefit of those listening to the podcast version, those stats tell a lot of stories about Man City, but they say that Jesus, if he starts and if he plays and gets minutes, he's going to do well because he is top of minutes per goal attempt in the box. Um, so he's a shot in the box every 21.2 minutes. That's the top for all Man City options. 
So he's going to get quantity and he gets quality as well. He's got to score 10 goals in his limited time and four assists, uh, noting. Um, Aguero, however, has played more minutes than him, less minutes than Salah, but it's just behind him, 22, 22 so minutes, which is so it's a minute per goal attempt in the box, one every 22 minutes. That's really good as well. So they're 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 up there. They're the top. They're the guys. If that is that is impressive. To be fair, but here's my question: If you weren't on bench boost, and it wasn't money, wasn't an issue, would you still you still wouldn't go for Jesus, right? Or would you? I'd get well, I'd get Aguero, obviously. But okay, so he I, is I, the better option. Yeah, he is. But I've got I've got to look at I've got to look at ways to boost my other players as much as I can yeah, yeah. To, to get the most out of this bench boost. I'm not I'm not denying. I mean, no, I've watched football over the last few years. I'm not saying Jesus is better, but I do I do <laughs> think the. He is pretty good, but I think I think the the way things have fallen like works quite well for him. I mean, don't forget they can start together as well. It's not just a case of it. Yeah, yeah, that did happen. Jesus that's, that's what happened one of the last four. It, it, it can happen, and, and I do think Pep is gonna he rotates anyway, and now he's got five subs and games in, you know coming as quickly as they humanly can. So he's gonna he's gonna use that massive squad as much as, as possible and I just think it, it, it gives you an opportunity doesn't it when everyone's going for Aguero and I'm going to talk about Aubameyang later as well mm. when everyone's going for Aubameyang going for the players who are sort of alongside them but not necessarily that much worse than them that no one's got could could be quite good especially where I am because my rank's rubbish anyway so I need to do something Same to here, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why I've gone for Sterling because I do think there's an out even if he doesn't start by I think mm. he it will probably be the midfielder after De Bruyne that gets the most minutes that would be my guess um, and, and he's kind of underperformed this year. Like his stats are pretty good. Uh, and he just has massively underperformed. Like he's scored less points than Mahrez. And Mahrez has played a lot less time than Sterling has. But I just think a fresh break, you do, we just don't know who's going to come back. I'm going to bet on the guy that can be explosive. So that's yeah, why yeah. I've gone for Sterling. I just wanted to, I really uh, like, I really I just like wanted to make a point about Laporte as well. And I think one of the problems with Laporte, even though I, did, I have benefited from his 20 points before in a double game week, but I'm not going for him because I think... The nature of these four teams, we're going to come to those other three teams um, in the double game week. There's loads of defensive um, players to go yeah, for. Yeah, same team for Loads me. of choice. And I'm not sure Laporte is the better along them. But when it comes to attacking options, as I'm sure we're talking, Villa, Sheffield United. I mean, they're not, it's not, we're not talking Barcelona and Madrid here. <laughs> so um, we're not awash with attacking options. So there's spaces in the team. Whereas with defensive I had real problems trying to pick defenders. I want so many. Um, but anyway. We'll I, I think Laporte will come into play more for me if I was on a bench boost maybe and I couldn't afford the three attackers I want <laughs> or if I had to build a team that I wanted for a bit longer term because I just don't know for the first three fixtures if you can really hold three Man City players that are that expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, if, if we're just free hitting and stuff, it doesn't matter. But then I would probably look more towards Laporte. But until we know if he's going to... Because he, he did come back before the season got postponed, but he was wrecked. Like, he couldn't finish games, and he kept coming off, and he'd been out for so long. Uh, obviously, it's really hard to tell, but yeah. So, basically, there's a lot of good Man City players. If you, if you don't get Laporte, you're having to pay 8.5 million minimum for any of their other players. Yeah, yeah. So, that, that's, that's exactly why I've got him in my current draft, because of that reason, just to kind of spread the money around a bit. So, I've actually gone quite budget on City, when actually I want to put more money... In, but yeah, there's other there's other teams, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, well, we'll come to the one thing on the subs thing, which is really interesting, is um, I saw a thread uh, by Neil Murray that said um, the top team uh, they all pretty much used their subs, especially like in the first week. Uh, but the top teams tended to use them a little bit less than the bottom teams. But I don't necessarily expect that from Man City, um, but they can only yeah, make right. subs <laughs> three times, so they can't they can't kind of time waste. So once you make a double sub, you kind of got to change maybe few different players at a time so we'll have to see how it plays out um but yeah i mean we're gonna see reduced minutes i don't think anyone's gonna sit here and say otherwise let's move on from man city um and go to arsenal next uh so one question about them but obviously we'll discuss them in general as well so john h ryan is a premium fourth midfielder like pepe worth it especially for those bench boosting uh, and needing to get a good bench together and, and then in general what arsenal players should we consider so joe you looking at um any arsenal players yes <laughs> I was really excited, and then it dawned on me that I wasn't. <laughs> so I'm still really excited about Abamyang. Same. Um, I want Abamyang. Um, uh, Leno is a. Pl- I think Leno is good for me on a free hit because we'll come to Sheffield United. I think there's other reasons. But I was on a bench boost. Um, he's also a good option to go alongside Henderson, perhaps. Um, but I think those two are good. Um, but the third one, I did have Pepe in, and then I thought, what the hell am I doing here? So. Um, 
<laughs> um, Aubameyang doesn't get so many chances, but he takes them well. Um, and that's what some of the stats are showing on here. So he's a minutes per goal attempt in the box every 47 minutes. Not a lot compared to those other guys we were just mentioning. That's, that's, that's half a Jesus or half an Aguero. Yeah, he's sc yeah, he scored 17 goals. So, you know, he's like, you know, a Vardy of old. Um, he doesn't actually need that many chances. He's very clinical. Um, Lacazette, I'm just not sure he's going to start. There's too much competition up front. Um, there and Aubameyang is very creative from the left coming in so you know he fulfills the purpose I don't think Arsenal have someone who can do it as what, well as him what about a certain 4.4 million well, striker well um, I may or may not which one I may or may not mention him <laughs> later as <laughs> yeah I will um, as well <laughs> but um, but yes um, I do think because if we look at the stats that we've got on here now um, Nikitia 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 who's that Eddie 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 N Enketia uh, I think Enketia yeah this is a scout cast tradition of getting names wrong um, so and he's a pro and he's a pro now Eddie N left us behind <laughs> um, is top for minutes per goal attempt in the box still behind the likes of Jesus and Aguero but one at every 35 minutes there so that proves that when he is playing he is actually amongst the best strikers that they have uh, possibly the best um, that they have if we think of Aubameyang as coming in off the left. Um, so, yeah, I do like him a lot. But I think, um, I don't know, I'm probably like a lot of people, excited, then I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got Aubameyang too. Like, I, I see a lot of people kind of doubting him. Like, so there's someone in the chat there, I can't see who it was now, saying he's a trap. Like, I just don't see, I get these a lot of money. And, you know, during the season, it's been tough to fit him in for a lot of people because they've had Salah Mane, De Bruyne, whoever it might be. But like the guy just scores goals all the time, and he's been so consistent this season. And Man City's tough, or I get that. And and maybe in a in a normal game, you'd, you'd think maybe they wouldn't be able to score in that. But I just think when you're coming back off this long break, like anything can happen. Will defense be set? I just don't know. Um, so Bamiang is like a shoe in for me. Like the problem I have with the other players, the attack. We're talking about defenders in a set, but the, the attackers is who the house starts up front, like in the in the front three, if they continue to play. Um, kind of front three like Pepe did start like six of the last seven but Martinelli's there can play mm. and Ketia as well where does Lacazette fit in there's Nelson For me, like, the as rest well of... Nelson is a very very strong option yeah. to start so the, it's just it's just it's just a minefield I feel like if I was on bench boost I would maybe risk one of the 4.4s mm. like Saka and Ketia or someone like that um, and just hope for the best that they'll start one and get minutes in the other. But on a free hit, I've kind of, I've pretty much talked myself out of it because Saka's been playing, he did start one of the, the pre, I'm just going to call them pre-season games, um, further forward. But in the league, he'd have been playing left back to cover. But Tierney and Klasnach are back now, so I wouldn't expect them to play there. So maybe that's a, a bit of reduced minutes there because there's other players that are in contention. So are you looking at any other attackers as, or are you, you're not even looking at Aubameyang, are you? I mean, Arsenal are the team that's giving me the biggest headache because you tell me any of their players and I'll be able to tell you why you shouldn't get them. <laughs> Even Aubameyang, I know he scores goals for fun, but I mean, um, Michael's just said in the chat kind of, uh, you know, kind of exactly what I was about to say. The games aren't that great for Arsenal, I don't think. I mean, away at City... I can see them not scoring in that match. I can see Arteta setting them up really, really defensively. Aubameyang playing quite deep, playing on the wing, sort of not getting as many chances as you'd expect. And I really don't think that Brighton game is, is a great game for Arsenal. We beat them earlier in the season. I'm not, I might be a little bit biased here, uh, but, you know, it might it might suit someone like Aubameyang kind of on, on the counter. But, you know, you're throwing all your eggs into kind of one game for a, for a double game week player. And I don't really see many people captaining him. And he's, what, 11 million. So... Yeah. He, he was in my team as soon as, as soon as I saw the fixtures. I was like, right, Aubameyang, number one in my team, fine. The more I think about it, which isn't always the best thing, I think, actually, if I took that money, got in Enkitia, 4.4, that saves, what, 6 million, 7 million of, of budget? I mean, that is it's, it's absolutely outrageous what you can do with, with that kind of money. And I think he probably is going to start one of the two games because he was in, he was he was in favour before it's all started. He's been scoring a couple of goals in the friendlies they've been having. Uh, and, you know... It, Lack of, and the, I don't know. And the other thing with Aubameyang is um, this whole contract thing. Like, what is going yeah, on yeah. there? How have they not? How have they not given him whatever he wants? Uh, I don't know. It's it's all very strange. Uh, in terms of the other attackers, I've got I've got Pepe in my team. I feel exactly like Joe. I look at him and I think, what the hell am I doing with <laughs> Pepe in my team? 
Uh, I've also got Saka in my team, and I think like you, Andy, and I'm like, what the hell have I got to do with Saka in my team when he's not even? I mean, he's not even a left back, and he might not even play at left back because they their other left backs are now fit. So where is he going to play? But Arteta does like him, so maybe he will. And then you look at someone like Ozil, and you think 7.3 million, but you think it's Ozil. Do I really want him? I, I'm really, uh, I'm really, str- I'm really struggling with Arsenal. Yeah, Ozil's like started. I think he started every game under Arteta, but he hasn't performed at all. Like he's only seven point three. Like part of me, part of me does just think it is a double game week, uh, and and that is a trap we always fall into. But this one's a little bit different. That we are coming off a massive break. We have no idea what these players are going to come back like. So maybe the Evers going to do a what the hell is a double game week pun? Maybe this is the week to do it. I'll, I'll give a little bit of a shout out for the defenders, and not because they're any good. But I see a lot of people, this is just a little bit of a differential that I've touted that hasn't really picked up much traction, right? But a lot of people are going for Leno in goal plus a Sheffield United defender. I think there's a, like the tiniest, slimmest bit of merit maybe to go in, if you can afford it, because it is more expensive to do it this way around, but going Henderson in goal and going for one of the Arsenal fullbacks. I've got a feeling that Tierney or Bellerin, maybe both, might start both games. Um, and that just gives you something a little bit different. You're still covering both clean sheets. You've still got one Arsenal player, one Sheffield United player. Um, and the Sheffield United defenders do have a little bit of goal for it, some of them. But I don't think it's so massive, apart from Lundstrom. Let's, let's take him out of the equation a set. Um, I don't think it's so massive that you have to be worried about not owning them. Uh, and Tierney, like I checked him like last, last year in Scotland, five assists in 20 games. I know the Premier League is a different game, but he's not really had a chance to kind of get going in the league because of all the injuries but he does seem to be back now he did start both the both the preseason games so did Bellerin and we've seen Bellerin do alright at times before as well he's been a big favourite um, within the FBL community so that's the only kind of slight differential I could find with Arsenal um, it's just it's just basically covering their clean sheet but maybe going for attacking points the only problem is like I've said it costs more money and you probably are maybe giving yourself a chance of less minutes as well because they could get rotated, those fullbacks. Maybe not Bellerin as much, although Maitland-Niles can play there, but Klasnach can play on the left and so can Saka. So it's a little bit of a concern, but that's that's a slight pun. Are either of you, Joe, are you considering... I was, I was, consi- yeah, I was considering uh, Bellerin, um, but I, I favour Sheffield... We'll come to Sheffield United in a bit, but I just favour their defence. And I also favour, and we'll come to single game week players, I also favour some of those defenders. Um, I think with Bellerin, he, up against City... Just scratch that off for clean sheet. So, you know, the, you go for clean sheets. Um, now, Leno's not going to get a clean sheet either, but he's going to at least, you would think, get some save points, unless he has an absolute nightmare. So he's going to get save points. So I just think he's nailed on. He's going to get me save points. Could get a clean sheet against Brighton. I'll take that in double game week. Um, with Bellerin, I'm not so sure. If I was bench boosting, I would definitely consider, and I had the money, I would definitely consider Bellerin or even David Luiz, who I think will play oh, both of God, them. No. And um, and yeah, it, it's come down to that. But if I was bench, I'm not bench boosting, luckily, so I don't have to consider that David Luiz. <laughs> so um, yeah, the long answer to that is no. I think it's, I think for free hitters, I think Leno is a is a really good option. And I think if you feel a bit punty, um, go for Bellerin. And if you're on a on a bench boost, the world's your oyster, really, because they get a bit cheaper. But I, I don't think they got security of starts apart from Leno so yeah that that is the problem I, I do get it it does give me a bit of confidence that they both started both kind of there's only four five players that have done that for us or started both the games pre-season yeah. fullbacks Leno uh, and Aubameyang were all, were all mm. the, the kind of players so it gives me a little bit of confidence I know what you're saying like Leno if he doesn't get it he can get saves I guess the fullbacks they don't get a clean sheet they could get attack and returns um, which could match the saves, but yeah, stuff. And what about you, as any interest before we move on in Arsenal defenders? Have you got any? I think the problem is, I think Arsenal are going to concede a lot of shots as well, so that automatically makes Leno the, the better pick. And I would rather have a Sheffield United defender with a wing back or with you know, I know they haven't exactly got a great record of goals and assists, but you know, they, I think they're going to be they're more likely to get a, a set piece goal or a kind of. I don't know, some some nice play from the wing with Stevens and Bulldog sort of cutting in. And Henderson, I wouldn't have thought was going to make that many saves against Newcastle and Villa because they're rubbish. Um, so I'd rather have the goalkeeper who, who's going to make loads of saves and the defenders who've got a better chance of attacking points, I guess. I mean, I haven't... I, to be honest, Leno's the only one I've even remotely considered. I'm not going anywhere near Bellerin, Louise. I mean, there is that guy who's, what, 4.8 million? 
um, Mari, is it? He started sort of just yeah, before yeah. The, the season sort of went, went down to lockdown. So, I mean, you know, he, he's quite a cheap option. But then you've got Bolly at the same price away at West Ham. So, he, yeah, I don't I'd, think I'd, I'd pick risk him. him. I'd pick him over him. You know. Leno has made, I think, the second most amount of saves as well this season so far. So, there is potential for save points. All right, we'll move off of Arsenal and go to a, a much, much better defence, Aston mm. Villa. Um, <laughs> oh, three, <laughs> as you said, are an awful team. I mean, let's start off. Do either of you not own Grealish? No, I've always I've him. I've had him for ages. Yeah, I'm a I've hipster Grealish owner. <laughs> yeah, I don't I like him like... anymore, but I've got him. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I own him too. I mean, we we can chat about him in a set, but I think I think virtually everyone's going to get yeah. him like six point four million. You yeah. don't get. You don't get many better um, players for that. And with two games, he seems the best. Are you, like, we'll come to you, as Are you considering any players apart from Grealish at all from Aston Villa, either so defence or attack? So I've currently got Pepe Reina, which is uh, actually pretty horrible, uh, in the slim hope that he makes loads of saves and doesn't concede. I mean, I don't even know if he's going to play. There's talk on some forums that Nyland's going to come in uh, and, and Reina won't play. But sure, That would be devastating. Know. Imagine spending a slot on an Aston Villa goalkeeper and he doesn't even play. Yeah, I mean, he's in He's in because he's cheap. He's 4.5 and, you know, he's my kind of reserve goalkeeper. But, yeah, so I've got him. Uh, the only other player I remotely like the look of is McGinn, who did well for me kind of at the start of the season. But I've seen the comments today and it's kind of been said, oh, he's not, you know, he hasn't had as many minutes over the season as other players. He's going to have to be kind of eased in and, he seemed a bit more worried about him than be like, you know, if it'd been like, oh, John McGinn's ready, let's let's go for it. I'd be a bit more kind of passionate. But uh, yeah, I mean, those two, I mean, I'm seeing quite a few people with Samata, which I just can't understand because there's so many strikers that I think are going to do well uh, this week. So, I mean, other than Reina and McGinn and, and, and Grealish, I think is you've got to have Grealish. The ownership is so high. He He's actually got potential to do all right like he's such a talented player uh they've got something to play for as well i know they've got quite tough games but he's 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 the man to have i think you could get away with just him to be honest yeah he's been doing well all season i can see why so, like a lot of people who seem to have rainer because fpl big Mac did ask a question about him, could rainer be an interesting double game week differential uh, and then lord Heskey actually asked is the villa backline worth considering at all um, is there anyone who isn't Grealish worth it? So they're, they're kind of the question that came up. I see, I've see. i seen some people getting Rainer. They seem to be mostly bench boosters. I haven't seen many people not bench boosting having him. And it kind of makes sense because really, well, most people aren't going to have Edison because they're going to go for three outfield Man City players. Although we, we should have said really for Edison, at least you are going to get probably the most nailed Man City player, mm. potentially getting two clean sheets. So he could be an option. But a lot of people I, I see going Henderson, Leno, so... Reina just saves a bit of money. I just, like, Villa are one of, if not the worst defence in the league. Like, they conceded the most shots, most shots in the box. Uh, and I just don't see why this three-month break is going to change. That. It's not that they've got new players. Um, so I, I, that would be, like, a backup on the bench, which Reina for me. But otherwise, I'm, I'm completely ignoring um, the defence. Have you got any defenders, Joe? Um, I have, and I haven't. And I'll tell. I'll explain. You got mad saga, I'll, haven't you? No, I'll explain why. Um, but I just wanted uh, there's people uh, who are watching uh, notice we've got some stats on the screen, and so for the benefit of those listening to the podcast, those stats basically say the Villa defence is rubbish. It's record-breakingly rubbish, and it's particularly rubbish at set plays. And Sheffield United are quite good at set plays. Sheffield United, incidentally, play Villa and Newcastle. Um, within the next three, I believe, and Newcastle are also amongst the worst defences in terms of set plays. So that SP figure on the screen there says set plays, shots conceded from set plays. Um, so that's why I'm not considering, realistically, a Villa defender. Um, and that's when I'm considering Sheffield United's um, goal threat. Um, and we'll come to that shortly. Um, but I also would say, um, so obviously Grealish will bust, definitely. Um um, but I do think there is a case, if you're playing a free hit, to think, oh my God, what's going to happen? Could could COVID affect some of the team sheets and all those kinds of things? Um, so I do think that someone like Mings as a first sub isn't a bad shout. Because Mings plays twice. So you would think, I mean, he's going to concede, but could get something. You never know. Um, not a bad first sub, but he's certainly not someone I'd want to play. But if there's um, some form of rotation... Uh, or some form of um, COVID-affected uh, matches, I'm quite happy for Mings to come in there. So I think that's something to consider as well. And I think the same could probably apply with Target as well. Um, but yeah, Grealish, just 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 before I 
uh, add over again is the um, some stats really with Grealish. Um, he's created this season 69 chances. Um, the next nearest of Villa's ranks is El Ghazi with 27. So he's he's pretty much three El Ghazis in terms of creating chances. In terms of shots, 55 more than any other Villa player. Um, and 17 of those being on target. He's got everything really. Six, scored six assists, got seven goals. It's only 6.4. Uh, 6.4 is he? 6.5? Um, yeah, it's a no-brainer. You've got to have him in. Um, and you know, hope his uh, effective ownership is below 100%. So you're going to get some points from him then. I think El Ghazi is a very good option. He was temporarily in my side. Um, I think if, if you're bench boosting and you're looking for that sort of differential, El Ghazi is more nailed on to play. He's more likely to play up, more play up front. Um, and I think the likes of um, Louise and, uh, you know, there's lots of competition in the central and defensive midfield roles. So if you're looking for sort of a, uh, an attacking Villa punt, um, obviously McGinn, if you think he's going to play, but it doesn't look like he's going to play that much. Um, and El Ghazi, I think, might be the one. His minutes are so erratic, though, yeah. El Ghazi. Like 27 minutes but twice that's, in a that's row. What, that's what, that's what you, you get what you pay for. He's a, really, he's a cheap Villa midfielder in a double game week. You get what you pay for. <laughs> So I, I didn't verify this, but I was I was streaming last night and I said the same thing about El Ghazi. And someone said to me, a Villa fan, that he came off on 20... So one, he started that first game that was 27 minutes and got a knock. And then apparently he played in the uh, Carabao Cup, I think it was, with the knock. And then that's why he was a sub in the last game. So they... Obviously not guaranteed to start both games still. It could be could be reduced minutes. But that, that Villa fan, I, I apologize, I can't remember who it was now. They did make it sound like they think he will play, and that's why the 27 means. Because I thought exactly the same. Um, so there is a chance, but I don't know. Like Villa are just so unappealing. The, I, I think I could have probably talked myself into McGinn. Um, but like I said, that quote about um, I, I can't remember that quote, but basically they, they have to see if he's ready and how much he can play and stuff is is a worry. And and the defense is they're so bad. They're just not going to keep clean sheets. So you're relying on attack and returns, and one of the games is against the defense. We're all going to back so. He just, just can't go there. The, the, the problem with McGinn, and, and I had him earlier in the season, was that they changed his role to get more out of Grealish as well. So McGinn was absolutely amazing right at the start of the season. And then suddenly they realised, actually, Grealish is by far our best player. So they dropped McGinn quite a lot deeper. And do you remember that game when they beat... They scored like five goals against someone, didn't they? Or six goals against Norwich? They went crazy. 5-1, uh, I think it was. Yeah, 5-1. McG McGinn got nothing because I had him. And I was devastated. And it, and then you, I actually looked at the heat map, and McGinn was, you know, pulling the strings kind of deeper in. So, I wonder if that role is going to carry on with him anyway. So everyone that's kind of getting really excited about, it might have forgotten about that little patch where he <laughs> went a bit deeper. Yeah, sorry, I saw something earlier about him saying that um, he is, he's been asked to do more, more of an attacking role and defensive role, so maybe get up and down the pitch even more. And he wants to be like a nuisance up front. He said a bit like how Jamie Vardy isn't your typical number nine. He's just a nuisance. He was saying that he wants to do that role or he's been asked to do that role. But if he's not going to play, it doesn't really matter. So mm. um, he could, I think he might be an okay option going forward. But the problem, like, when, I can't remember which one of you said it, though. The fixtures are so bad. For Aston Villa, they, they really have to do something against these big teams for me to look at them longer term anyway. Um, let's move on to the last one then for the double game week at least. Uh, Sheffield United. Um, so first of all, I, I think a lot of people are going to back the defence. Let's let's just start off with one man in that defence, John Lundstrom. <laughs> Joe, is he going to be in your team? No, because I want nailed on players. Unless um, with Neil's team news video and podcast later um, reveals that... Um, Lundstrom's absolutely nailed on to start but at the moment he's not nailed on and I can't I can't risk that in a double game week on a free hit you've got you know places are precious and I can't I can't on a player I know is going to be rotated as it stands no <laughs> no he's not what, what about you as I'm really really tempted really tempted because again I think it, fit, it fits nicely into this thing if he plays one game and gets 30 minutes you're not getting a defender you're getting a midfielder mm. and arguably their most attacking midfielder but I mean he's better than Fleck if it, if it was even if even if Lundstrom was classed as a midfielder I'd rather have Lundstrom than Fleck if they both play the same amount of minutes in the double game week so I'm really tempted because if he starts one of those games he gets a clean sheet and gets an attacking return you've got a double digit points from a 4.9 million defender and it's not 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 ridiculous. 
Yeah, I'm, I must admit, I am sick of being punished by Lundstrom. And uh, the, I, my knee just so hard when I saw that he started that game and scored two in preseason. <laughs> yeah. And like, you're right. If he starts one of those games, there is absolute chance of a clean sheet because I think they've just been so good this year. And the attacking potential, he is one of their best attackers as well. Um, so I am full, like, the, it is the first game on Wednesday. So there is a chance we'll get early team news. If he's starting that first game, he will be in my side. I yeah, will take, because, because I'm on a free hit, yeah. I will take the risk for the second game yeah. um, and just Absolutely. hope for the best. If he's not, then I'll completely ignore him. I won't take the risk that he's also going to, he will start the second one because Sandberg is there um, and that is going to be a problem. All right, we'll come back to the, the or oh, we'll come back to Sheffield United in general then, Joe. Like, mm. what, um, which defenders are you looking at and how many? Because right, a lot of people okay. are kind of doubling and tripping up. Yeah, I just think I think double up as well, just because if you look at the fixtures, they're just too they're too good really. Um, the clean sheet potential. Um, so um, and as we can see now, the, the, the stats we got up on the screen at the moment are attempts from cross corners. Now you remember the last screen that we had, which showed Villa being the worst at set plays, and this is why we're starting to sort the Sheffield United defence. Are there any good? from corners, they're any good from direct, indirect free kicks, and that's what you're looking at here. So this shows you that in terms of attempts from cross corners, uh, O'Connell is, is right up there. McBurney is worth a punt if you want a bench boost, I think, and you need to free up funds, uh, nice and cheap there. Egan as well, doing really well in terms of the underlying stats. Um, attempts from indirect free kicks as well. So he's got a little bit more, not just corners, but he's getting attempts from indirect free kicks. Um, in terms of big chances created, O'Connell with six and Egan with none. So that says to me that O'Connell, I think, is marginally more likely, <laughs> but you never know. This could be, e Egan could quite easily score and O'Connell could not. Um, Lundstrom is there, but as I said, I would definitely pick him because he's got seven big chances. Um, but attempts from cross corners is really high as well, nine. He's got he's got a lot, <laughs> obviously, but is he going to start? Don't know. Um, so I think I'm, I'm looking at a bit of a mixture. I'm looking at O'Connell. And, and I think Egan is a good bet as well. But I'm also looking at Ender Stevens. So he has created more big chances than any of his teammates. Um, so I'm looking for that mixture of fullback, centre back, overlapping the fullbacks and centre backs in the Sheffield United tradition. There, I think two is fine. I think three is is very possible. But I am going to go for Fleck. I think. And I think Norwood, for the same reason, is a very good option. And the reason is, if you look at those corners stats there, it says Norwood has taken 86, Fleck has taken 70, and I think Lundstrom's taken three, and everyone else, absolutely nothing. <laughs> so um, you're looking at who is likely to assist from these set plays against these awful defences at set plays, then it's probably going to be them. And I remember, Norwood is on penalties as well. I think all of the ones I've just mentioned there, if you pick whatever three you pick, I think you're in with a chance. So I don't think there's any wrong answer with them. I think just any of those. Um, just pick pick three. But don't don't scrimp on Sheffield United. Scrimp on Villa. Scrimp on Arsenal. But these are precious, beautiful commodities in Sheffield. Nurture them for your double game week time. Yeah, I think a lot of people will definitely double up. I think most people will triple up. What about you, Az? I saw, um, I saw someone actually mention they think that um, Sheffield United are such a kind of system driven side they really do have like a way of playing and they've done it the whole season um so it's kind of driven into all the players so that actually might help them when they come back like so are you are you considering that or, or is it just the fixtures are so good you're double tripping up anyway yeah i mean i think the double up in defense i mean they've got they've just got two really good games that's that's kind of the main thing ignoring how good they are defensively and everything you know the, the games are really good so it kind of screams two three players from them anyway I think Joe's point is is interesting. They're, they're almost like Man City in the fact that they've got loads of players who could score well, but they're also the complete opposite of Man City because, like Fleck and McBurney and Musse and all Whoa, these, and all these guys. Oh, I mean McBurney. Let's talk about McBurney. I mean, <laughs> he's been in and out of the team all season. He gets a run of games, one, two, three, six games in a row where he starts and gets ninety minutes, no goals. <laughs> I mean, yes, it's not great, is it? Let's be honest. Uh, Fleck as well. I mean, everyone's going mad for Fleck. I've got to be in my team at the moment. He's got five goals this season, but again, gone six games without getting anything. Uh, I can't say I'm too excited about any of their attackers, but I do really like Henderson in goal for obvious reasons. I do really like Lundstrom if he's going to play one of those matches and start. Um, and then I like one of the wing backs. 
I mean, the Bulldog and Stevens, I love a wing back. And I just think Bull, Bulldog is really appealing to me. Um, I've currently got Egan, which I'm not really that excited about, but Joe's kind of talked me around a little bit into thinking he might get a cheeky little set piece goal. Uh, but I, I, I think I think Henderson, Lundstrom and Henderson and Lundstrom, exactly like you say, Andy, if Lundstrom starts that first game, amazing option. Henderson, Lundstrom and, and one of the wing backs go for the triple up. Is that what you're that, doing, that, yeah? That would that would be what I what I do. But it depends on if Lundstrom's not going to play that first game, then I'm probably going to have to go for Fleck. And if oh God, I want Lundstrom, I mean, <laughs> Lundstrom ruined my season. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah, mine killed, too. he's killed me but yeah I think I just think he's he's going to be highly owned as well and it's a good opportunity for him to to come in and what is happening with his contract though they still haven't given him a new deal have they he's they don't want him anymore no it's interesting no, Lynch, yeah. Lynch I mean, has been signed has not he oh, they've given him a new deal have they I believe so yeah or, or they certainly I don't know if he's literally signed on the dotted line, but I, I believe it's there. But I think there were contract I mean, wranglings. But I know that the Sheffield United Twitter feed, their official feed, has been Lundstrom mad recently. Well, there you go. There you go. Better, better option then. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. Like, Lundstrom will be number one if I think he's going to start. Like mm. For me, the other, I find the other defenders really hard to kind of pick between, to be completely honest, because I've looked at Egan because he, he does shoot the most usually. Like he's shot them out, forgetting them out Lundstrom for a second, he's had the most shots inside the box. Although from 17 all season, he's only had two on target. Um, last six matches, six shots, none of them on target. So he's not exactly uh, a sharp shooter, but all you need is for one of them to go in. And he's very cheap, Egan. Uh, 4.6 million I think for me like Stevens is the one I'm getting plus another one yeah um, now I was going to triple up on the, on the defence I'm actually looking now at going for McBurney his stats oh. were, I know I know look he's very he's very cheap I know what I'm paying for I'm not I'm paying for someone that didn't score many goals when he did get that run in the team I'm going to have to do some more digging before Wednesday um, but my assumption is and I think I've seen a few Sheffield United fans saying this that it will be him plus one and that's what it has been for kind of the end of the season. He only did only score one goal in that time. But his underlying stats were really good. Five big chances in the last six. He didn't put them away, of course. Uh, but he's had quite a few shots inside the box over that time. But then the other reason, it's not just because of him. I, I appreciate, like, if he has the same amount of shots in the box as Aubameyang, Aubameyang probably scores more goals. But he's playing Newcastle and Aston Villa. That's two mm. of the worst offences. No, they are the worst. Now, that from the, the worst at set plays, remember, so... Yeah, and, and even if you look at kind of the things like even just like shots, shots inside the box, Villa are right up there. Newcastle quite high. Newcastle do have a pretty good home record, but is that even going to matter anymore? I don't know. Um, even if it does matter, it's probably going to matter less, I would say. So I do think there's a chance he could get something. I appreciate like it's a very hard sell to put McBurney, especially when the defence has been so good. Um, but he is very cheap for that forward spot. Like who I'm thinking about who else I could put there. Like Samata keeps coming up. I... I I will say I don't know very much about Samara. I've not seen him play very much. Um, he doesn't stand out as a, a much better pick than McBurney for me. And then, okay, I could go for Jimenez, who's a bit more expensive. I've got the money to do it. Who's been extremely consistent and probably will score on. against West Ham. I know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even on, saying he's better. comparison between McBurney I, and Jimenez? No, I'm not, I'm not saying McBurney's better. I'm not saying that. But would I back him in a double game week where I have no clue what these teams are going to come back to? You haven't like even got a wild like... card to run away from It's McBurney. a free hit. It's a free hit. Oh, it's a free hit. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. I can't. Yeah, okay. I literally will run you away can from run away. straight away. You can run away, yeah. So back a striker playing two of the worst offences in the league when I've got kind of a big... I've got like a core of seven, eight players I'm really happy with and then a few punts and he is one of them. So I probably will go for it. I, I could... Basically, I've got McBurney and Doherty that could be a Sheffield United defender and Jimenez instead, which probably it probably is the more safe way When you way say around. it aloud, don't you just realise how much better that sounds? Yeah, no, I'm saying, I, 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 I would probably agree. Defender. If I had to give advice to someone which one to go for, I'd probably go Jimenez and the Sheffield United defender, but I want to be a bit different uh, while I'm on a free here and I'm trying to make up a bit of rank. And McBurney's 0.3% owned, playing Aston Villa, who just can see goals for fun. They'll literally just wait until he scores and then carry on with the game. One, they, don't want one... to, they don't want to keep clean sheets. One one policy I've always tried to have is that when you've got a team that loves a one nil win, their strikers are normally out for me. So you've had you, you get it with Burnley, Sheffield United, had it with Newcastle a few years ago, like Blackburn. You know, you've got like an Allardyce in charge or a Pulis or someone like that. You never normally consider their strikers. Well, I don't anyway. So I just they're gonna if they get go one nil up against Villa, they're not gonna suddenly go right. We need to get three or four here, lads. They're gonna go okay. That's enough. 
See you later. McBurney. Villa, Villa, Villa was one of the games they scored more than one. They scored two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, they scored two. Yeah, look, yeah. I, I, I honestly, I wouldn't sit here and try and hard sell McBurney to you because it is a massive punt. Uh, but it is one that I, I'm strongly considering going for, I will say. Mm, interesting. I think with McBurney, as, as, as has been said, you get what you pay for. You know exactly what you're going into. I think if you're on a bench boost, I think he's a really serious consideration. Uh, and a free hit, I'm not quite so sure of. But also, I just think so. Looking at the at the um, the table and the figures that we've got on the screen, and just all of those stats we've been reading out as well, I just think there's so much choice for defence. And then I think in Fleck and Norwood, if you're gonna, they're the assist guys. So I just, for me personally, just take it right down to basics. Who's who's gonna score? Well, there's. <laughs> we're talking about McBurney for God's so <laughs> so it's, it's it's likely to be nicking a goal somewhere it's likely to be some of their, their overlapping full backs and centre backs you know causing mayhem um, and it's likely to be a set piece and it's likely to be Fleck or Norwood to assist uh, that's the way I think of it having said that we're going to um, we're going to end up with I don't know <laughs> who knows what is is there with the B team of Sheffield United? But God, I love a double game week. You, you, you you get, you get one th- can I just say one thing though? I see teams, especially with benches, and you've said it yourself. You don't have lunch, and you'll get Fleck. Like having Fleck is okay, but not having and McBurney isn't. Like, how is Fleck any <laughs> yeah, better? The strike, there's so many good strikers this week. That's the thing. I mean, we're gonna we're probably gonna talk about single game week strikers in a bit. Him and there's one of them. I mean, there, there are so many strikers that I want. McBurney, mm. you like? No, no. Hey. no, no. Hey, yeah, that's, a, that's do... a, another great segue. I was going to say. You mentioned Jimenez. Hey, let's have a little pick of him. There we go. Single game weekers. We we talked enough about the double game weekers. We realised that there's some you really want to go for, and some we're like, uh-huh, what are we they doing in our side? Meanwhile, there's a tendency to forget some good single game game week players, um, especially Jimenez. So as yeah, this is your part. What single game weekers are we considering? I guess. Yes, indeed. Oh, let me just get up my uh, my thing because I was. We've been talking about all the doubles for so long. Uh, right, so we've had some questions from the community. FPL Neil, those bench boosting in double game week 30, which single game weeks have you built value on that you're looking to keep? Which is a really, really good question because I have had to sacrifice some team value to get my bench boost sort of where I want it. So that, that, that's, that's a good question. Uh, what the FPL, who are the best single game week defenders and midfielders to consider? Uh, primarily in the 6.5 or below category. Oh, I wonder who I'm going to talk about in that, in that little segment. And Maverick Marco, are we overlooking Chelsea players away to Villa? Oh my God, yes. People are overlooking Chelsea players away to Villa, I think. Um, so yeah, let's, let's come to you first, Andy. Single ga- so yeah, so you're both on free hits. How many single players have you got? Single game week players, not single players. That'd be weird if you knew that. Single Two. game week players have you got? With some church impression here? Two. Two? Mm-hmm. Hey, Joe, yeah. who are they? I have... Tammy Abraham because he's playing Villa who are awful and he is the main striker at Chelsea hopefully (laughs) and even if for some reason he's not I'm sure he's going to get at least 30 minutes he scored against uh, Villa in the reverse fixture it was him on Mount if I get an inkling that Abraham is not going to start for whatever reason I would go for Mount I think but I've got that slot a Chelsea slot I want a Chelsea attacker against Villa definitely Yep. Um, I also like Wolves fixture against West Ham. I personally am going to go for Doherty. He's not a player that's coming in my squad. He's a player I wish I did have in my squad, actually, for the long term. And I may look to get him, but I have Bolly at the moment in my proper team. Um, but I do like Doherty. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in him than Jimenez. I've owned Jimenez a, a long time. He's, he's actually in my proper squad <laughs> and quite happy to go with him for. But he's my experience of owning him is he's really, really consistent, but he's not massively explosive. He has had um, three uh, double-digit hauls this season, but Doherty's had four, who's, and he's a defender. So there's more chance, and Doherty's played less minutes as well. So there's more chance, I think, of explosive return. There's also more chance he's going to get two points or one point. Um, but nevertheless, I think if Doherty does well, could be, we could be looking at clean sheet, could be looking at assist, bonus, goal. He's got, he's got everything I want. For a free hit player, Jimenez, I think if you've got Jimenez in your side, you are going to get at least a return. You're going to get at least a goal or an assist. But I'm being ever so greedy and free hit fever, and I'm going for the other guy who could possibly get me more. 
but uh, who knows um, but yeah so I do think that Vardy against Watford is another very good option for those who are going for it but um, yeah for me it's not, not on paper it's, it's Chelsea and Wolves so whatever you're looking at for single game week because I think it's, those are the big fixtures for game week 30 yeah, uh, that's, that's literally bang on. I mean, my, my one of my big decisions is going to be uh, Jimenez and Alonso versus Abraham and Doherty because the potential yeah. for any of those four, I think, is is so great. I think that the Chelsea and the Wolves games are just are just so nice, and that is my one of my big considerations was make sure I don't go too. If I have to lose an Arsenal player to get a Chelsea or a Wolves player, I'm happy to do that. Because I think the Arsenal games, you know, we're talking about how tricky they are. But those that Chelsea and that Wolves game, they're gonna win they're gonna win those games. There could be some massive points from from those guys. And you've got three, three single game we players. Who are they? Uh just two, I think. Oh, Should I be just three. Two. No, no, I've got two. <laughs> um it, it, Joe basically nailed it. Like my the three spots that will ro- potentially rotate out of my team. Um, at Bernie, so basically, Sheffield, I've got it'll be one Sheffield United, one Chelsea, one Wolves. Right now, I start a team mount. McBurney, that could be Jimenez, Chelsea defender, whatever, Fleck, whatever it might be. That's probably the three spots. So I will probably have two single game weekers because I just I, like players like Ozo and Pepe, just I just can't get excited about them really. But if I thought one of them was going to start both, then I might go for them. But so yeah, I, I am targeting Chelsea uh, for all the same reasons I talked about McBurney and United. They're playing Aston Villa, simple as that. Um, my only concern about Chelsea is knowing exactly who's going to start and in what yep. kind of formation and and who's like Abraham. Um, I assume will be first choice, but Giroud did okay towards the end of the season. I think he's I think he's already scored in preseason as well. Um, Alonso, like, I would love Alonso. I think he's one of the big. Like, he's only just over four percent owned, like, and he was he has been so good this year. Seven points per game over ten matches is incredible. Um, but is he going to start? Will it be Reese James and Asper Quetta? I don't know if we're going to know enough before the deadline to convince me to go for Alonso. Um, otherwise, I would love him. And yeah, Joe basically nailed it for me with Wolves. Like, I'm sure Jimenez will get something. Am I worried he's going to get like a 17-pointer? Probably not. And I, I got to be honest, I, and I fully, before I say this, let me say, I fully appreciate virtual FPL is not the same as FPL. It's coded. <laughs> There's no real life situations that it gets affected by, etc. But one of the things I did in that was was just went for gut instinct. Sometimes when I'm behind, like I am in FPL, do something different. And going for Doherty and Mao is going to be different than going for Jimenez plus whoever it might be. Uh, and Doherty is very low owned, and he can be explosive on his day. Um, and so I just like I've not got any Liverpool players, for example. Knowing full well that I can afford Trent instead of Doherty. I mean, I can afford Trent, but I'm probably going to choose to go without him. Knowing full well what he can do um, and what he has done to me before when I've not owned him. And that Everton game might actually be a little bit easier without the crowd. I've seen some people suggesting that, which which could be true. Uh, But I'm just going to go for Doherty, much lower owned, who can be explosive on his day as well and just hope for the best. If I get punished by Trent, so be it. I just feel like this is a week where I can take those chances not knowing what's going to happen basically so yeah Wolves and Chelsea same as you that's that's who I'm targeting for single game week I just think Chelsea are hard to call and exactly who's going to, like Pulisic is a player I would like but who's going to start on the wing they've got four wingers that can play um, Mount. and Mount yeah exactly Mount can play wide and central yeah. as well so it's just it's so difficult to call um, I've got Mount currently because I feel like he, he can play in a couple of different positions and under Lampard he pretty much does start when he's fit um but if I knew him and Pulisic was going to both start, I'd probably go for Pulisic, but I don't know that. So, it's tough. Mount is, is such a strange player because I would say he's arguably been Chelsea's player of the season this year. And yet, I don't think he's first choice. I think they play Kovacic, Kante and Jorginho, Pulisic on the left, and then William on the right and Abraham up front. I think that that is, their, that is the, the, the team that Lampard likes the most. I mean, where does Mount... Mount kind of fits in when they're rotating out of Jorginho and Kante. So I think he's, he's going to see minutes, but he's a strange, he's, he's a really, he's a really strange one, Mount. And, and Pulisic as well. I, I, I don't think they're just nailed on enough to, to really, to really warrant me to consider them. Whereas Abraham is, is their first choice striker. And I think you, they've got an away game against Aston Villa. It's too, it's too good not to ignore. It's just too good to ignore. For for those um, free hitting or thinking a bit more short term, it's worth saying that Jorginho is suspended for the next match. So 
that means that Mount's chances. So Mount's probably going to come in and play in that middle. Yeah, okay. I, I, he I, has I, missed hardly any games this yeah, year yeah. as well. Like he really has yeah. started. Like I'm just quickly looking at. It. There's only two, three games he hasn't started all season. Like he he has played the majority of games. Like because he can play on that left side um, or centrally. So I feel like that like, he, he will probably start. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't say nailed on, but that massively um, boosts um, Mount. If he's, I mean, he's pretty he's definitely going to start that game then against Villa. No, I want him. Yeah, he's, only, he's very, he's very easy to fit in as well. He's only like yeah, six point yeah. two million, and, so you don't have to raise a lot of and money. As I said in the reverse fixture, the two scores were Abraham and Mount. So if mm. you believe in things happening again, lightning striking twice, or at least Mount striking twice, then um, he's definitely the one to go for. Um, I'm yeah, personally like not that. looking at Liverpool. Although I am aware, obviously, their players can punish me. There's nothing Andy mentioned. But it's a Merseyside derby. You know, I know it's, there's, it's, in, it's you know, there's no crowd there. But it's a Merseyside derby. It's hard to call. So I want a free hit. Why, you know, why mess around with that? Instead, go for these other ones targeting these these weak, well, on paper, weaker defences. Manchester United and that's... Spurs as well is another one that could be very high scoring, but it's also very hard to call. I don't know who's going to win that. I don't know whether it's going to be nil-nil or five all. I don't know. So neither of you got Trent then? No. No, see, like, I'm on a free hit, so, so I don't yeah. have to worry about the value. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Um, but the thing is, I know, like, he could massively punish me. The thing that worries me, is if a few people have planted the seed into my head, is the, is the no fans thing. And Liverpool going to Everton... Usually, you know, of course, they've done well against Everton this year, regardless of the fan thing, by the way. So they could just do it again. Um, but they might even have an even bigger advantage now because they've not got the crowd on their back. Like, to me, it's just like, it's almost like a training game. And when I think about teams that are probably very, very good in training, it's Liverpool, Man City, the best teams, of course. So I, I am a bit worried, to be honest, about not going for Trent because he is so good and I can afford him over Doherty. Um, so I, I, I really don't know what to do. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested at all in Mane and Salah because I will not captain them. I know they will be, still be owned by quite a few people, but realistically, a lot of active managers are, are using their unlimited transfers to target this double, yeah. and it's extremely difficult to fit them in. So I'm not really worried about them, and I'm definitely not going to captain them anyway. Trent is the big one, especially if I'm going for a different single game weaker because like, part of me just thinks... In any other circumstances, Doherty versus Trent, I always pick Trent. Yeah. It's just the fixture, I think, is slightly better for Wolves, that West Ham game. Uh, but I don't have the value to worry about. I know a lot of people do, and, and that's why they've kept him. So we, we, had a, we had a question about um, you know the value of, of single game week players. I think that's where I have to think about things a little bit differently to you guys on the free hit. Because I bought Trent at 7, and now he's 7.8. So I'm going to lose 0.4 if I get rid of him and then bring him back on the wild card. The only other player who I've built up loads of value on is De Bruyne, who I want for this week anyway. Everyone else, and I know it stacks up, I'm only really losing kind of 1.1, 1. 0.2 if I bring them back. There's not that many weeks left. So Salah and Mane were thinking, so expensive anyway. That... Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly it. So I'm just, I'm just bidding, I'm bidding them all off except for Trent, not worrying about value. Uh, I'm keeping Trent because I think the fi- the fixture's decent and I want him for the end of the season. So he stays, but yeah, everyone else is everyone else is gone. Yeah, definitely. I think with Tr- Trent as well, part of it when he scores well and you don't own him, part of the part of the worry is obviously, oh dear, I'm slipping down the rankings. But the other thing is, how am I going to get him back in because he's such an expensive mm. defender? For my for, for myself and Andy, because we're free hitting, he's already in our side. Yeah, so, yeah. So we know we don't have that worry. So he could get twenty points, and then it's like, oh my god, that's so sad. Missed out on those 20 points. But hey, Presto, he's back in again. We don't have that headache with him. Um, Happened to Luke, didn't it? When yeah. Luke took him out. And it's sim- it's sim- I did the same. Before oh, Leicester. no. And this, oh, it's similar to one of Salah and Mane. They are hard to get into. They're, re- they're really easy to get out. <laughs> they're mm. really hard to get back in. Especially, you know, if you are targeting the likes of a Bamiang, Aguero, Sterling, KDB. You, you just can't fit them all in. Um, one of the... One of the interesting before we move on, as um, was there anything else you wanted to mention about single game week? Because because um, just uh, conscious of time, I wanted to move on to the next section. But if there's anything else you wanted to add about single, no, game no, really, I think you, I think you, you hit on the nail on the head. Okay. Really, it's Wolves and Chelsea, and I think one of him and as or, or Abraham has been everyone's team. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Long term, so a lot of people are in the situation where they perhaps don't have a second wild card or they are already thinking they're very good planning and they're already thinking oh who should be in my game week 31 wild card side 
Um, so what I've got here is a massive patchwork quilt picture on the screen. And for the benefits of those listening to the podcast, it's a patchwork quilt <laughs> of fixtures. Um, but what that basically says is that Manchester United are a team to target. Manchester City are very much a team to tar- target from game week 33 onwards. Tottenham are a team to keep an eye on. Make sure you have a route to get Kane in or Ali if you want them. Uh, Burnley are good defensively. West Ham get a little bit better, so monitor there. Everton are up there. They're patchy, I think. Patchy, patchy fixtures. So they've got like Bournemouth and Villa at home, but they've also got Tottenham, Leicester, Wolves, um, Sheffield United in there as well. So knocking. It also says that Arsenal are very good game weeks 31 and 32, then get less good. So bear in mind, remember, I said City are good from 33 onwards. So if you've got Aubameyang, 31, 32, suddenly 33, he can become an Aguero or he could become a Sterling if you want to use two transfers there. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind, I think, because um, we had a, a few questions about long term strategy. And I think it's important we hope to do on the scout cast is we're not just talking about the next game week. We've always got our eye on the next game weeks coming up. Um, so I think uh, I think that would be important information for people there is to look, to look ahead, look at the fixtures. Um, Gavin Butler. Um, with the new five subs rule, should we go for more nailed centre backs than tacking win backs long term, um, who look prime for being substituted? Um, and then Martin H answered, are Liverpool's premium attackers becoming inessential? That's obviously if Liverpool win the league quickly, which uh, they should do soon. Um, and Hamez Massé, are we avoiding mid table teams with little to play for, like Everton and Burnley? So I'm um, just thinking long term there, and some of those thoughts there, some of those questions. Um, as what do you reckon? Um, what are you looking at for you are wildcarding game week thirty one? Mm. What what sort well, my, of players my are you thinking? Pl- yeah, my my plan is to focus on the teams with a good game, good games, and something to play for. Mm-hmm. So I think the, the the screenshot you've got up shows quite clearly. There's there's actually quite a few decent teams mm-hmm. with those kinds of players. So you've got United, you've got City, you've got Spurs, and you've got Wolves. Those to me are the players that I predominantly want to get in my side. I'm probably going to go for three wolves because I mean the the, the price the price points that they're at. I mean you have got someone like Yotta at six, mm. what six point five. Jimenez has climbed up to eight, but it's still good value. You've got Bolly at four point eight. You've got Sace. You know I I just think they've got so many decent players that you can get in. And then um, sorry, I know sorry City won't have anything to play for after this week, so they're probably not. The, but but Tottenham as well. The, basically the top four race is really exciting and the relegation race is really exciting so when you've got players who've got decent games and are fighting for that they're the ones i kind of want to get in uh united top of the fixture mm. ticker andy you must be well excited for that fernandez martial and rashford prepared. triple up i'm I've already got the triple up i'm just waiting for game week 31 <laughs> You're in. I mean, yeah, Mark. I'm. I'm definitely looking at uh, a Martial and and Fernandez, uh, double up with there. I mean, Rashford is. I keep. I keep ignoring Rashford, and he keeps outscoring Martial. But I. I. I just like the out of position midfielder. You know, just drawn to it. So I'll. I'll probably. Go, I'll probably grab those two on the wild card, uh, and then three Wolves. And that's five. My. My. My eleven. Good, it's good, good thoughts there. Um, I'm just going to put a picture up on the screen. Uh, so for the benefits of those listening to the podcast, this is a picture of my actual team, the one I'm discarding for Game Week 30 and saying hello to in Game Week 31. The reason I put it up there is this is the sort of team that someone like me, who's used a wildcard before and has tinkered a bit during the off-season, um, has. So these are the types of players. So I have Leno and McCarthy in goal. I have Alexander-Arnold, Fernandez with a Z. Uh, from Newcastle, O'Connell, Stevens from um, Southampton, that is, Bolly. I've got Grealish, Salah, De Bruyne, Cantwell as my fifth midfielder, uh, Fernandez, and then up front I've got Abamyang, Calvert Lewin, and Jimenez. Now I'm not holding that up to say that's the perfect team, but I'm saying that's the sort of team that those that are wildcard in game week 31 are going to be up against. So you're, hopefully, because you've got more knowledge you'll, and more information, you'll be better than this one. So I'm looking at this team and I'm thinking mm, McCarthy and Stevens perhaps could go. Um, I've got 1.1 in the bank, so I'll be looking at someone like Maguire. I do like those Manchester United fixtures. Already got Fernandez in there. Um, that was a benefit of my earlier wildcard, by the way, and those who did wildcard early to get Fernand- and got Fernandez in, I think he got me something like nearly 40 points over the, my four weeks of my wildcard, so him alone. 
Um, and I think Rashford is good. So think about price points. And that's what I've hopefully done there. Get a premium attacker in because you never know what you're going to have to do. You can move quick then. Um, and have, have the likes of Salah, De Bruyne, and you can move them around. And think about Manchester United. If you haven't got loaded up on them, think about how you perhaps maybe get wan Saka or Maguire or Martial or Rashford. You know, these are some of the players to think about. So that's why I put it out there. Not, it's not like a rating I'd, team, but just an, uh, an indication. I'd love to slate that team. But <laughs> if when I wildcard next week, I'm probably going to have nine of them. You're going to have that team. <laughs> And, yeah, it's but, it's solid. But I don't I don't take that as either a compliment or an insult. I wouldn't <laughs> well, because because <laughs> it's just basically a statement of fact. This is a sort of team that people who wildcarded a month before the season locked down. Yeah, and have also tinkered. So as it stands, Cantwell is probably the best value fifth midfielder. Uh, that may change, but the basics I think the, and the price points the, I don't the, think will change. No, the the advantage the wildcarders have, I guess, is that we're a bit more flexible with. Rashford, Kane, yeah. Son, some of these guys who've come back that you're going to struggle to get into with with that team. So I think that's how we, we we're going to have to try and get ahead. I think so. Son's probably going to be in my team till the mm. end of the season because um, I think he's the best Spurs player to pick. And you know I could go for Rashford instead of Martial. Not yeah. not that many people are going to have him unless they've brought him in. So yeah, I think yeah it's, it's going to be interesting. It's like kind of the old guard versus mm. the guys who've got a bit of a uh, left something in the yeah. In the bank. I, mean, I think um, say for example I've and other people who've got a Bamiyang would think, oh, I've got an easy route to Kane in. But yes, if I've got want to get um, Son in, downgrade a Bamiyang, upgrade likes of Grealish. I'd want Grealish for the double game week. I prob- I think I want him for the rest of the season, even if they're bad mm. fixtures. But maybe I don't. But keep yourself flexible. So I thought I'd mention that there. Um, I just, um, yeah, Andy, what do you think in terms of your team? Because you're quite happy with your team. But are there long-term players that you've got? You, you're happy with your Manchester United, but are there any other players you're thinking of that we perhaps haven't mentioned that you think, oh, I, you know, I think I might want them long-term? Yeah, if you think that team's good, you should see mine. It's even better. I'm well <laughs> happy for mine from Game Week 31. No, like, um, the, the centre-back question is interesting. Uh, I've seen a few people mention that, that they may be more nailed on. The only thing I would say is, like, I... Teams have still got something to play for. Just because they're five subs, they're not going to start completely rotating first 11s. In fact, I think that might even make first 11s maybe a little bit more stable because they know they can make the changes and give them a little bit of reduced minutes. And if yeah. you're thinking of defenders, how many defenders are going to like regularly going to come off before 60 minutes? If you've got a fullback that comes off just after 60, bam, there's your clean sheet. So it might not even be the worst thing. So I am I have gone for Maguire over Wan Bissaka because I don't think there's much in it. And I just kind of like... Maguire anyway I can just picture that goal from a header from a corner um, but I haven't necessarily just picked him because of the centre back thing so I'm not making not yet anyway making most mm. of my decision that's probably a bit one of the big problems about this question is like we could be thinking completely different from next week when we've actually seen uh, a few matches in terms of players to target I've got triple Man United I think their fixtures are great Fernandez. I don't think mm. many people can argue about that and Martial when he's fit has got good, uh, really good value as well um and I've actually got two men in the bank, so I can literally upgrade Marshall straight to Sun if I uh, if I want to go that route. Uh, I've always yeah, kind of similar like Wolves. I've got I've got Jimenez and and Sice. Like I would love Doherty, but I don't have the cash for it in my normal side. Um, I will probably look at a third Wolves player. I'm not sure who that is yet. Uh, I want to see how Jota kind of starts yeah. off. What formation they play? Is Triori back in? Because if he is, he's very good value as well. Um, I know he's in that the side. Is he, is he fully, fully over that shoulder kind mm. of dislocation as well? Man City, I've only got De Bruyne, and I'm probably happy with that for the first couple of weeks because they played Chelsea, Liverpool. Um, after that, because I know what you're saying, like Man City, will, you know, they're going to get top four. They can't win the league. The top four isn't mathematically safe yet, so I don't know if we'll see complete rotation from them straight away. Um, and if I get any kind of inkling that they're playing with a se- semi-ish stable eleven then I would be, and, and Liverpool are rotating, so I've seen a bit of talk about that, then I might swap out Salah for like another Man City attacker just to kind of go for it. But I would have to wait a few weeks to it's see great, that. It's, it's great with the wild card. Sorry, it's just because it's great with the wild card because I can see what Pep does when those, in that Arsenal and that Burnley match. And then I can, because, you know, if he does play the first 11 twice, and those, I mean, he won't, <laughs> but if he does for whatever reason, then you've got to think maybe he's going to stick to a more kind of settled side. Uh, I, I, having the wild card is, 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 is great. I have to say, at this stage. A lot of people thought it wouldn't be that much of a, a kind of benefit, but I think it's huge, huge advantage. It is a benefit. I, like, and we are probably going to get low, we are going to get more info after one mm-hmm. game. I just wonder if 
you're gonna that but what, the only problem i think wild carders will have it's not really a problem but um like you whatever you're thinking is now could be completely changed after just one game week and is that enough data to make all those changes i don't know but we are yeah. we are going to see how the sub rules and stuff play out but um Mm. Uh, yeah, otherwise for long-term single game week, is kind of just wait and see out. So the ones you've mentioned, like Man City, Man United, Spurs for sure. Like yeah. some, I, some I really want like as well. Yeah, let's move on. Looking at clean sheets, next four, um, next four game weeks. Who are the best ones to target? So this is relevant if you're bench boosting, you're wildcarding later or wildcarding soon. Um, but from game week thirty up to game week thirty-three, Arsenal, in fact, best. So. Best chances according to our season ticker. Um, yes, they play City, but they also play Brighton. Then they play Southampton. Then they play Norwich. So it's pretty good odds there. Then they play Wolves. Okay, less less good. But um, they've got a chance. Newcastle, don't underestimate them. So that's why I've got Fernandez with a Z in my side. Lascelles, another good cheap option to get there. They play Sheffield United, Villa, Bournemouth and West Ham. Three of those are at home. I think a Newcastle defender, cheap one's really good. Um, for the next few try them out uh, Manchester United obviously we've spoken about Tottenham Sheffield United Brighton and Bournemouth next great set of fixtures Sheffield United are then next with uh, Villa and Newcastle I think it gets dodgy then <laughs> with Manchester United and Tottenham and then Burnley so patchy for clean sheets there and uh, so on um, I think Wolves have got a couple of good fixtures they've got Bournemouth and Villa uh, and, and West Ham so Arsenal is, uh, is their last one in game week 33 in this this segment so okay I think Bolly is a good bet I think Doherty you're getting a range of price points there so there's just some of the teams to think about now with a differential um, it's my turn for this <laughs> one so I pick one um, so I have gone for Enketia I have gone for him 4.4 for Arsenal the reason I've gone for him he really fits the bill for a differential pumped here he's got a double game week coming up Will he start? Well, he's going to get minutes, even if he's not... St he's going to start one, I think. I've talking to a lot of Arsenal fans, and they believe that him and Lacazette, as it stands at the moment, are very probably going to share minutes. They've got Martinelli as well, but the feeling is, for that central role, it's going to be Nketiah or Lacazette. So I think he's going to get minutes. 4.4, 1.4% ownership, great differential. Um, and as we see, we've seen with the earlier um, figures that we put up on the screen, uh, Nketiah is in fact got the best <laughs> rate of uh, minutes per goal attempt in the box. I think he's a great differential option, uh, especially for those bench boosting. I don't know if I've convinced you fully there, as now. I mean, my, my only issue is that I kind of regard him as a championship striker who shouldn't really be anywhere near the Arsenal team. Mm. But then... I'm not as good as manager as Arteta, so I'm probably not the best person to judge. I mean, we're going to come onto my team in a bit, but I, I am strongly considering a downgrade of Obama Yang to Nketiah just mm -hmm. because of what it does for the rest of my squad. I mean, he and is I think, playing three championship level defences in Brighton, yeah. Southampton, and Norwich. So, yeah. I mean, it could be it could be Obama Yang that goes central and, and you know, neither Nketiah or Lacazette play, which is another risk. Uh, but I mean, for 4.4 million. I, I, I do like it. I can mm. see. I can see why. I can see why people are, are tempted. Yeah, Andy, what do you reckon? Tempted? Yeah, I'm not tempted. No, not on a free here. I I just think there's other players I'd rather have. I'm probably more likely to get two starts out. That's the only thing that would worry me about him. If I was on a bench boost, mm. I might risk one of the cheaper Arsenal players. I've seen some bench boosts with like Saka and Enketia, and that uh, that's just like yes. too much of it. I don't, I don't like that at all. I just think that's. Um, almost like hoping for the best maybe although you know i have considered pepe which is kind of the same <laughs> so yeah i don't mind him i, I think I, like i said earlier outside of a bamiang like you could probably make a case for any of them to start one game plus minutes in the other one to be honest there's so much choice there well i i've made bench boosters feel a bit happy with that one remember this is the differential is for the next four game weeks um so one of the reasons i've obviously picked him because he's got double game week but this is for the next four i just think that, 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 that bunch of fixtures is good for, for uh, yeah. attacking returns there. Let's move on to the drum roll bit uh, where we reveal our team. So we've spoken about most of our players, but this is good uh, recap uh, to get it sorted. So I'm going to read this out for the benefit um, of those uh, listening rather than watching. Um, so this is as his bench boost side. This is at the moment now... Current. current. This current. is in, pro, in progress. And, and, in progress. And, and after I say that, you're going to reveal who's possibly in and out um yeah. so you have henderson in goal you have alexander arnold laporte and egan 
Then you have De Bruyne, Pepe, Saka, Fleck and Grealish as a five in midfield and Aubameyang and Jesus up top on your bench. Um, so getting points from Reina, hopefully. Tammy Abraham, hopefully. Uh, Justin, who is the Leicester uh, fullback mm. who will be replacing Pereira, we think, uh, and Doherty there. So that's a, quite a strong bench boost there. Um, but yeah, so tell us a bit about that side. Who's your captain going to be? He's got, he's got De Bruyne on here, whether that's changed. Um, but and also, who else is in your thoughts? De Bruyne, De Bruyne's locked in as captain. I, I just think, I, I just think he's going to play most minutes, and he's just so, he's just so good. <laughs> I just, mm-hmm. I want, you know, it's got to be a City player with those two fixtures. And who do I think is going to get the most minutes? Who do I think is going to get the most points this double game week? I think it's De Bruyne. So he's he's the one I'm going for. Arsenal are just blowing my mind. I, I just, I, I don't know <laughs> what to do with them. I've got, I've got Pepe and Saka, and I just. I have no confidence in them at all. And, and actually, normally I come on the scout cast and I show my team and we talk and I say, actually, this has really like hindered me. I, I'm now doubting myself and all that. I, I feel like I can see clearly, clearer now mm. that the scout cast has gone. Does that work? Uh, maybe. So I'm thinking I'm thinking to, to do my plan. And, you know, I'm looking at this team and I'm thinking, I've got Laporte, I've got Pepe, I've got Saka, I've got Fleck, I've got Aubameyang. I'm not too sure on any of these players. If I did a little downgrade of a Bamiyang to Enkitia, I could upgrade to Sterling. I could get Alonso. I could get Bruno Fernandez. I could put Leno in goal instead of um, Reina. I could upgrade uh, Egan to Bulldog. You, you know what I mean? It, it just gives you a lot of extra players. And I remember when James Eggersdorf came on, and he he was very much in favour of dropping Kane and and mm. sort of spreading the the points, you know, the the money around the rest of his team. Is a dangerous strategy because Kane was such a explosive option and was being highly captained. I mean, I'm dropping a player who I'm not even considering for the armband anyway, and it's only for one week. I haven't got to worry about, you know, sort of, oh, no, I've got to bring this player out now and get Mane in and all that because I've got the wild card to mm. kind of make up for it. So I'm thinking with a bench boost, with a with a free hit and a bench boost in one week, really spreading those points around could be quite a powerful mm. strategy. So, yeah, I mean, my locked-in players, I'm definitely going to have Abraham. Mm. Because I think that Chelsea game's great. I think Justin, you know, as you said, the Pereira replacement, uh, he'll probably stay on the wildcard team as well. Uh, I've made my mind up on Jesus and De Bruyne and Alexander Arnold and Henderson. So I've got I've got quite a few of the core players locked in. But yeah, that Aubameyang money would really would really strengthen the rest of my squad. So I am pretty tempted. Okay, now someone in the live chat called um, Andy says, "What an awful team this is." So let's put Andy's team up now. They so, would. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, it's a shame. It's a shame. <laughs> like I know the scout cast has been quite long. First one back. I feel like <laughs> if we discussed this team earlier, we'd be spending a lot of time dissecting this. If 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 one of us had put that team up, as would have destroyed it. What's wrong There's with that? No- there's no way you're going to have well, this the team. Thing is, it's, it's, what is wrong? What is wrong? What is wrong? <laughs> Apart from Pepe and Saka, what is wrong Apart with that Apart from Pepe, Saka, Fleck, Jesus. Fleck's all right. He's okay as a bench boost option. But I feel like, I, I do feel like in general, right, one thing on bench boosters is they're sacrificing double game week players I think they'd want to bench boost, which isn't necessarily an issue because I get it. You're more likely to get um, 15 starters. But I just, I just think there's, there's players in there you, you probably want instead. I just, I think Jesus is just there because I, I can't afford a Guerrero type move, which is fair enough. I get it. If they, if Guerrero only starts one game, Jesus could win, win out. Um, but Instagram, Andy. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I don't know. Look, maybe I mean, uh, you're bench you some cheap players for his Fleck and Saka. Look, you can, you cannot say with a that that team is not that team is going to score well this double game week on paper. Well, it's, it's, not that, it's, maybe it's, that it's, one. Your, your, your proposed changes. I really like no, the that, idea. That, get, that get, team. Oh, now, 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 now the mind games are really. Now, now I just want to keep that team. No, no, I'm, the I'm, only I'm, real problem with that you're team. You're never is, keeping that team. The only real problem with that team is Pepe. He's yeah. the only problem because of how rubbish he is in general. The rest of that team is completely solid. That team is Pepe Le Pew. It stinks because of Pepe there. And But once <laughs> Pepe is gone, it's absolutely lovely. It's like perfume. Because pe- as, once you de- downgrade Pepe, you can spread that love. You can up, you can upgrade Justin there. You can, um, you can get the Leno in instead of Rayner. You know, there's all sorts of things you can do to really beef up that um, that team. And it's so I am sort of slagging it off, but at the same time I'm also praising it because I only th- I only think Pepe is wrong with it. I think the rest are fine. Exactly, exactly. The rest are fine. Yeah, yeah. I think the rest are Bad fine. Team. I think it's. God. I think it is a good team. 
but Pepe is stinking that place up like a Pepe's a punt. <laughs> Double game weeks are about a punt. And you could argue, <laughs> you could argue one of Pepe's problems, massive transfer fee, no confidence, fans on his back. He hasn't got that worry anymore in an empty stadium. He'll have, you, he'll have you on his back as well when he doesn't score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he will, yeah. I'm a very angry but, but I do, But I do think it is a good team apart from Pepe. And, but, but you've already acknowledged that, you know... You... I'll, I'll, t- I'll take that, Joe, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, that's fine. So, um, so anyway, so uh, obviously Andy in the live chat was uh, having a pop at this team. So let's get Andy's team up. <laughs> the McBurney brilliance. The McBurney brilliance. So oh, I'm, for, the, for the benefits of those who are listening rather than watching, we have at the moment... Some places up for grabs, mainly on the bench. So at the moment, you're looking at Leno, Stevens, Doherty and Egan. And then you've got Sterling, De Bruyne, Grealish and Mount. And then a 3-4-3 up front, you've got the man himself, McBurney, Aguero and Aubameyang. And then you've got those four other slots that are going to be on your bench. And hopefully you won't have to use them and you haven't decided who yet. So, yeah, who's your captain going to be then, Andy? There's so much of me wants to captain Aguero. Mm. Um... Like, I really do. But, like, if I'm being kind of sensible, I know that De Bruyne's got probably more chance of starting both. And he's just been incredible this year. And is there the slightest of slight chances he's got penalties? Maybe. Um, so it's, it's hard not to go for De Bruyne. But there is a part of me that really wants to go Aguero. Because even though Aguero is going to have super high ownership this week, I don't think as many people will be capped in him because I think they're just all going to be drawn to De Bruyne. Um, so I am seriously tempted by that. Now, the defenders don't matter. I basically set this. I basically work it out with the cheapest possible players that I can put in those slots because I'm mm. pretty confident I'm going to get at least one start from all those players. Uh, and then if I've got money left over, I'll upgrade them. So it's just really, it's just really the McBurney, Mount, Doherty trio. Mm. I think everything else is probably going to stay. Like, I can afford to get Lundstrom in as well. He will come in uh, probably instead of Egan. Um, Otherwise, I'm really settled on this team. I really, Sterling's the one that I really want, and it's kind of just working off the back mm. of that. Like, I could get Mares and then get Pepe instead of Mount, but I, I just, I'm just not sure about Pepe to be honest. Like we just talked about, and Sterling was like sometimes like Sterling was just the first player. Like I kind of outside of the obvious Aguero De Bruyne, he was the one I really wanted, and I just can't. I just don't want to go back on that now. So, so, hold yeah. on a minute, you're you're slaying <laughs> my team, and you've just said that you're briefly considering Pepe. No, no, I'm saying I could do that. I could do Sterling to Mahrez, Mount to Pepe, but I don't want to do that. So I'm yeah, happy to spend that. Yeah, but you've considered it. Oh, I've considered it. everything. Like, I've considered having a Saka and Fleck, but that would be ridiculous. I will not be slated by someone from McBurney <laughs> in their team. That's outrageous. That's the, what I'm saying, you can't slate me for having McBurney when you've got Fleck. Like, he's not, he can't so, so the strikers are better. The strikers are better than the midfielders. As I'm not wasting you, a striker you, spot. Are you, are you deep down worried about this team, or do you look at that? Because this is a typical free hit side. So are you worried about the free hitters when you look at this? Or do you think, oh, God, I'm so happy. <laughs> I've got my well, bench what, what, is there, what is there to worry about? I've got, I've got Egan, Doherty, De Bruyne. Uh, I've got a Bamiyang in my team. The only, the only player there is Aguero who I'm making a decision to go against because uh, I, think, I, I think it might be an opportunity to make up if they're going to score. I think they're probably going to score similarly over the double game week. So it's an opportunity to, to do that on a one-week punt. Um, other than that, what is there to worry about? Sterling isn't exactly being the greatest player this season anyway. I think no, Mahrez I or, I think... or Sané or anyone could out, could score as many points as him. The thing, I just think Sterling, if anyone's going to come back and kind of just do something, like he's he's the one for me. Because he, his underlying stats have been decent. Like His expected goal involvement is very, 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 very close to Salah. He just hasn't put, pulled off. And it's not like he's a player that's got good stats and has never done it before. Like He has. So I think this break might do him good. And like I said, like he was the first one on the list. It's, I've just got a gut feeling about him, and I just I have considered teams without him, but I just don't want to go back on my initial. I mean, thoughts, to be, really. yeah, I mean to be fair, you know, if, if I if I downgrade Enkidu and upgrade Pepe, Sterling's the man that I'll I'd go for. Mm. So I'm not going to be too uh, too critical of okay. him. But yeah, I mean, you asked me if, if if there's anyone on that team that I'm really there's no one really out there who I'm that worried about. It, the, this the, the I'm whole. The same. The whole game is is so weird mm. now because there's so few big heavy hitters who I think are going to score. Like Lundstrom's probably the most, one I'm most worried about. Yeah. He's a four point nine defender, both for Sheffield United. It's it's just really quickly worth saying. With, with if I go for the cheapest bench options, that Mount spot, I have eight point two million to spend. So I could go for someone else. I can't quite afford afford Fernandez, but I could go Martial, mm. I could go for Ozil. Like there's a lot of options there, so I'm not fully decided yeah. on that. And I do think um, Abraham's a good option. Um, I just don't want Fleck, to be honest. No. I got, I'm going to put the faith in McBurney. 
can just hope for the best. Well, remember those out. stats with the corners uh, with Flex. So if, if we think Sheffield United are going to score from all those wonderful set pieces um, with those defenders in, um, then Fleck and Norwood are the men most likely. Um, here is my free hit side. So for the benefit of those listening, I have uh, Leno, Doherty, O'Connell and Stevens in a 3-4-3. I then have Grealish, Sterling, De Bruyne and Fleck. Up front, I've got Abraham, Aguero, who I'm captaining, and Aubameyang. And on the bench, now this is the bit where I've just had a bit of a laugh. Because <laughs> I'm hoping that I won't have to use it at all. I've gone for Martinez. I have an Arsenal slot free. And if Leno is not going to play, Martinez is unstudy will. So I'm just covering Leno there, <laughs> purely. Um, I've got I've got Tyrone Mings, who's a player I do not want in my eleven, But if I reluctantly have to get him in... Um, in the, with substitutions then fair enough I've got a double game week defender even if it is Villa um, I've then got Nathan Ake and I'm a bit worried though Nathan Ake uh, at home to Crystal Palace who has a goal in him and clean sheet potential could actually make me think oh god I wish I had a bench boost for that um, and then I've got Dendonka just for a laugh at the end because I've seen lots of bench boosters with Dendonka saying I'm going to get my Dendonka points and I saw D- David's original side in that and um so I hope I won't have to go Den Donker deep for this one. Um, so that's uh, why I've got those on my... It could be anyone. I just don't want them to play, but also sort of handy if they're there. Um, but that's... That is such a Joe team, that is. That is <laughs> like, that's a team that you can't really be too critical of, but yeah. you're nothing that exciting no, there. No. I'm getting, I'm getting... That is a Joe team, yeah. without a doubt. And the reason I've gone for Aguero is it's Aguero, who's at home to Burnley and Arsenal. Um, I really want to captain him. That's uh, actually the same side as mine, isn't it? Apart from yeah. Abraham and Fleck. A- Abraham and Mount. And McBurney. Yeah, and I've gone for Fleck, you've gone for McBurney. Um, and that's that's basically the main difference. And I think we're all agreed there on Doherty. So I think maybe, and maybe we're, we're the same as a lot of other free hitters. Maybe we're people will look at this and go, oh yeah, Doherty. But Doherty could be in a lot of free hit sides, put it that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's been a very long scout cast, but it's been the first one back after um, a very, a very long break. Um, remember, all the stats, uh, the season ticker, etc., uh, used here has come from the members area. So do have a, do check out the site. Lots of offers there. Uh, also, please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this episode. In the meantime, it's a goodbye from me. Goodbye. 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 All.